Hey, welcome everybody. Good afternoon. Um, welcome to OVC's presentation of the new match waiver spreadsheet hosted by the OVC Focus Center. I wanted to do a couple housekeeping pieces. So as you just heard or got a notice on your screen, this will be recorded and the PowerPoint will be available to you in the LMS after the event. And if you need closed captioning, it's accessible at the bottom of your screen using the three buttons. If you click that, you'll see an option for closed captioning. And without further ado, I'm going to share the PowerPoint and hand it over to Joel. All right, next slide. All right, hello everybody. I want to welcome you to our Match Waiver PowerPoint. Um, spreadsheet um, 101 kind of um, sharing the updates on the match waiver spreadsheet um, the best we can. I am Joel Hall. I know many of you know me. For those who do not know, I am the Deputy Division Director for the State Victim Resource Division for the Office of Victim of Crime at the Office of Justice Programs. And so basically what my goal is, and I've been with the Formula team for over 15 years now on and off, uh, is basically to help states understand many of our, our many different processes. And for those who've been around for a long time, you know we've done a lot of changes. And so a lot of those changes have been to try to consolidate, make things as easy as they can be, and shrink and just make your job as, as easy as it can be, even though federal or late regulations are always changing, always moving around. So what this um, PowerPoint basically is about is basically the spreadsheet. I know there's some concerns that people may have about waivers and stuff like that and some of our guidance. We will loosely talk about that and go over the policy, but we really aren't here to talk about maybe some of the changes that were in the VOCA Fix Act. I can't change anything that was in that. I'm here to talk about the spreadsheet and some of our requirements and what we're expecting and best ways to fill it out and best ways to communicate with your grant manager and many of the very positive things that we can do to help facilitate a positive relationship between OBC and the SAAs. Next slide, please. All right, so the outline today, uh, the outline is basically going to be an overview of the expiration of the national emergency pandemic period. What does that mean? I get a lot of questions. Um, I was just out in California, shout out to them. They actually had a good understanding, but I was meeting with another state the week before and they kind of didn't understand what to mean. So I'm just going to kind of go over again what that means, just a refresher. Um, so make sure that you're aware of that. Um, overview of OVC's match waiver policy just in general about the ability and the need to turn certain things in. Comparison between the old and new spreadsheet, and then questions and answers. And so we will, hopefully this won't take too long, but we never know. I'm, we're here to help, and we have a lot of other OVC people on the um, webinar who can also provide some assistance as well. Um, but in the end, as I always tell, your grant manager is your your portal, your link between the feds and your SAA. And any questions that you have, you can bring them to your grant manager and they will, if they don't know them, they'll bring it back to me. If I don't know them, we'll bring them back and move up the ladder because there's a lot of us working together and I've worked for 20, 30 years in the VOCA environment. And so we, if we don't have your answer right away, we'll work on getting it. And we also want to thank our, we have the VOCA Center as well, and want to thank them for hosting this webinar. As always, they have a great support and ally in helping us present to you many of the different things that we have, as well as hosting many of the things that they have to help you understand your job even better as well. So um, let's go to the next slide here. As you'll see uh, in a lot of different places, there's a lot of links. So this will be posted up probably on our OVC website at some point, as well as uh, the LMS system through the VOCA Center. So these links, if you need to know where the VOCA Sustain Act is, you know, click on that, or the policies or whatever, there's always these links to click. So um, I always tell people to you know click, click those links and save them somewhere. That's why bookmarks are shortcuts and different things of nature. So I'm going to go over some of the stuff we kind of know already, but we just, and there are probably new administrators or people who may need assistance. So I'm just going to go over quickly. On February 10th, 2023, the Biden administration announced that on May 11th, 2023, 
that plan to end the national emergency concerning the coronavirus disease, COVID-19. All right, this triggered the clause that's in the VOCA fix, public law nine, number 11727, that mandate states that to waive match for subrecipients during a national emergency period and for one year after that period ends, so May 1st, 2024. All right, next slide. At the conclusion of the VOCA fix, mandatory waiver period on May 11, 2024, state, Emer state administering agency SSAs should honor all match waivers granted during that period until they expired at the end of the applicable VOCA subaward for the, which the match was waived. So, if you happen to do subrecipient award for, let's say, February of 2024, that techni technically that they don't have to provide match until that subrecipient ends for one year. So remember, it's basically you need to honor, no matter when the period is, you end it at the end of that subaward. And that's a question that we get a lot. Some people say, like, oh, we did our awards in October 1st of 2023. Do we have to end the match requirement and on May 11, 2024? No, you, you honor the entire subaward period. So we'll answer, we'll say those questions to the end because I know some people have some exceptions. So just want to reiterate that. It doesn't mean that the match requirement ends on May 11th. It just means that um, you, that's the period when it's officially over and that you as the subrecipient in the award period, anything before that, they can finish out their award period. You honor your original agreement. New VOCA subawards renewals or continuations made after May 11th, 2024, would no longer qualify for a mandatory match waiver. Any match waiver request for those subawards should be considered under the SA's ordinary match waiver process outlined in Section 3 of the match waiver approval process. All right, next slide. Oh, I'll go back. I think we mixed one. Yeah, this one's a good one. This is important. So flexibility. As you see in the section, I know it's kind of boring, and some people criticize this, but this is a direct cut link from the VOCA Fix Act. In terms of the SAA continue have the discretion to waive the match requirement imposed on the subrecipients. So just because the national emergency ended doesn't mean that you, as your state SAA and that your um, administration or management um, leadership, um, if they want to continue a 100% match for all of your subrecipients, they have the authority to do that. If they want to do a partial, I know one state was telling me they just want to continue to do that for DB shelters. Um, they want to continue with the match process. Your state, based on your policies and what you want to do, can waive match in whole or in part for certain subrecipients, all the subrecipients, whatever. The trick is you just need to inform OVC about that, and we'll get over how you inform OVC about that. But you have a lot of flexibility, thanks to the VOCA Fix Act, and was actually in the original um, final rule as well, that some of that flexibility um, <clears throat> was already there. <clears throat> but this way, we even have more flexibility, so it's codified in two different areas. So you have that flexibility to do what you need to do. I know there are some states, I spoke to like three or four in the past few weeks. Some states want to go right back to the match the way it's always been, 20%, move forward, no longer have to fill these, spree, these spreadsheets out and move on. Some states want to continue some of the, the match waivers and partial for certain programs, and some want to continue to use 100% match waivers, all, a blanket, so to speak, which we'll, we'll go over the word blanket here in a second, but just constantly um, for all their subrecipients. And really, that's up to you as long as it's in your policies and in terms of how your management and, and your SA wants to do it. The flexibility is on your side. The match waiver approval process, oh, go back one more. The match waiver approval pro process sets forth how states should implement the match waiver process outline in national emergency. So just follow that as much as you can. Um, all right, next slide. States must establish and make public, um, remember this one, this is one we're finding sometimes, you need to make public your match waiver policies, whether it's on your website or, uh, there's many different ways to make it public, but you know, for websites, but it could be somewhere else. Um, match waiver policies that describe how to request a waiver, 
the eligibility for a waiver, the SA's decision and notification process, and the SA's reporting of waivers approvals to OVC. So basically, you're just going to make sure that you have your policies made public. Um, this requirement was effective upon passive voca fix. As states establish and modify their match waiver policies, states will need to make their match waiver policies public. I know we're seeing this all the time. I know that going out this year as we do our site monitoring and talking to people at summits and many different things, we get a lot of match waiver questions. And we know it's not everybody's making it public, so it should be public so that if a subrecipient does want to request a waiver um, with you, the SA, directly, they have those information um, publicly posted so they know what to expect. Next slide. Reporting policy change. The SAA will need to report to OVC any changes in their match waiver policy after the mandatory period of May 24th. I know I'm repeating, but it's important sometimes to be redundant. Report only substantial changes to your current policy. See the match waiver approval process, section three. If you have not submitted any policy during the pandemic period, we've had a few states. We, we came up across some states had not really changed their policy or they kind of did and they didn't inform us. So if you have not changed your if policy during a pandemic period, please admit it to us, the new one, um, um, the best that you can. So make sure that if you haven't done it, you need to do it. So just because you didn't do it in the past doesn't mean you have to do it in the future. So basically you need to make sure that you submit to us a policy. So submit your revised policy via just grants. I'll talk about the process here later in the slideshow. Um, make public match waiver policies describe how to request a match and the eligibility for a waiver um, and include information and policy on future pandemics. So in your policy, if you're going to you know, add new policy, change it, make sure that there is a section. I've been watching that as I approve as my grant manager sends it forward to me that somewhere it talks about what you would do in a, in a future pandemic. Um, it sometimes as simple as a sentence saying, we will revert to back to our original policy of this date. Sometimes some the one I just saw was a little more detailed. So it's really up to you. you. There's really no wrong answer, just as long as you describe what you would do during the pandemic and the next time, so. All right, um, next slide. Reporting match waiver spreadsheet. The SA shall submit to OVC via upload to Just Grants through a grant modification GAM or other method as requested by OVC and match waiver spreadsheet using the revised OVC template. Listing all subrecipient match waivers approved in the federal fiscal year to each relevant federal award by no later than 120 days after the federal fiscal year. So technically, the federal fiscal year ends on 930 of whatever year it is. And so technically up to the end of January, a lot of people do it before the end of December. Um, technically it is um, 120 days afterwards. So that would be June or January 28th, I think, if you do the math on that. So you have that period to then submit that in a GAM. And many of you have already done that. Um, again, those who are brand new, if this is kind of new to you, you can work with your grant manager, but you would submit that through a GAM, which will go, I'll show you the step-by-step -step process here in a second. Submit it through a GAM. We approve it. All it does is just goes into our system. It's a way of tracking that and keeping that, that done. Sometimes I know I've had um, some states send them to me directly and I was like, well, no, please do it again. This way it goes into just grant. So it's historically as housed. That includes the policy and or um, match waiver spreadsheet. All right. Next slide. Actually, go back to the next slide. Sorry, go back one more. I want to point something out. I was going to do it later, but since it's in yellow here, um, each chief executive may waive match requirement imposed by the director in accordance with the sub subgraph. So I'm going over the, the highlight section. B, as a condition for the recipient receipt of funds under any program to provide assistance to victims of crime authorized on this chapter, the chief executive shall report to the director the approval of any waiver of the match requirement. So this is important is why we have not eliminated the spreadsheet because we get this question all the time. Um, that section in the VocaFix app is one of the reasons why we still need to do the spreadsheet. And I'll talk more about that later, but I just want to highlight that. All right, next slide. 
All right. To submit a GAM, um, what you would do is you would go into your Just Grants Award, and then you would go under, as you can see in the blue, Grant Award Modification, initiate the GAM, and put programmatic in terms of the type of, of the change, which is going to be programmatic, and then you're going to go under programmatic costs. And then, as you can see, 128 annually to report the, the period. So you can put your match waiver spreadsheet in during that period. Sometimes you may have done your policy change around the same time as your spreadsheet, so you can put both in there. Sometimes you may just wait for your spreadsheet at the end. I've been getting some spreadsheets. Um, some people have thinking we have to do it quarterly. It's only once a year. So just a reminder, you do it annually. You don't have to do it quarterly. Just annually you submit what wave you matched out in the period before. Um, using the spreadsheet has multiple years, which you're going to show and demonstrate. So you don't have to submit multiple spreadsheets for different things. This one spreadsheet we'll use, and you can just fill it in for that particular year. Um, and we'll go over that in a second. All right, next slide. All right, so this is the old one, as you can see. So as we're always trying to do, we're trying to increase and improve and make things easier. For those who can remember, the spreadsheet originally before the, the um, pandemic was actually even three times longer. It was huge, it was ginormous. Um, that was before there was a mandatory match or, or waiver requirement in the VOCA fix. Um, so then we did the spreadsheet, and now we've shut it down even farther. So doing our best to try to make it as easy to fill out. And I want to thank those who helped me kind of pilot this and beta test this a little bit um, through. I got some good feedback, some not so good feedback. So um, these, you know, in this insight for those essays who are out there, thank you for your time and effort in um, providing some things uh, to help us make it as as beneficial to you as possible, even though you may not want to do it, you still have to do it. All right, next slide. All right, so we got less columns to complete. That's a positive. And we have specific tabs. Now, in just a second, I'm actually going to go and switch over and um, to my screen so that I can share with you what we got going on here. Give me one second. All right. I'm going to be sharing my screen. All right, there we go. Santana, let me know if you can't see it. You're good. All right, so this is the basic spreadsheet. Now, a common question I get, you can take this example out, each of the different years that go into here, <laughs> this example, we debated about leaving this in or out, but decided to leave it in. Um, just so that you can see how example is, but you can take it out. You don't have to keep it in there. I got one spreadsheet. Um, somebody was showing me a sample and they kept the examples in um, from last year. So I would say you don't have to keep that in. It's just a tool to help you. Um, so as you can see down at the bottom here, we have all those years. I put 2019. There shouldn't be any 2019s, but there was, could be some could be some some reason there is one. So I kept it in there and I went all the way to 2027 so that um, don't have to touch the spreadsheet every year and add new dates. Um, you're going to put the subaward number, the agency name, the subaward date, the VOCA funding required match, match waived by the SCA, a new match sub award, match requirement, et cetera. Um, a question I get a lot on this, and I have it on one of the questions, but since I have it in front of me, is we as a state, um, round our numbers, our match waivers are rounded. For, um, sorry about the noise, I happen to work on the street <laughs> in Chinatown, D.C. So um, we round our numbers. So if, in the case you round, then you can use solid numbers here. Do your rounding prior to putting into the web, web sheet. I, we, in, we looked at, um, yeah, well, we'll get to that, Crisilda. Um, so yes, we will, um, Make sure you basically round ahead of time before you put the numbers in. I thought about making it round for everybody, but then as I was asking another person to look at it, they said, well, we put in our cents. So it's just easier for you as a state that rounds to put in to round ahead of time because there are a lot of states that do use cents. They'll put it down to the penny in terms of their match waiver requirements. All right, so we have the instructions here that are in the front. Um, you know, you can follow this very closely. 
One of the things I wanted to say, I put it in number six, I add in terms of making sure that you round the number, submit the spreadsheet via GAM, and I make sure I put, I change that to the correct type of GAM in terms of using that in just grants. Um, and I think that's it. Um, make sure that you list the amount of match waivers by the SA in dollars, um, which is very important. And I think that's all I have in terms of that match waiver spreadsheet. Now we'll come back, of course, and ask questions. Joel, there's a question um, for you through. in the chat. I'm sorry. There's a question for you. All right. Well, let's see. Um, will, the, will we get the Excel used in the, the sheet in the Excel spreadsheet? Yes. The answer is yes. Um, it will be um, uploaded to our website and we will send it out via an email. I wanted to wait in case there was any changes or anybody. I just wanted to wait at the last minute, to make sure it's correct before we move forward on that. So, all right, can you clarify what the years on the bottom tabs represent? Did you say that this is the FYI of the award? I do, or does it relate to the time frame of the sub award? It relates to the time frame of the sub award. So it's very possible that you may use a different sub award. So that's time frame, if that makes sense to you. Um, maybe I should share back again. I wish I could see when I share, I can't see my screen. So it is time frame. Because you may have in a particular year three or four different awards that you're using in a time frame, so or even more, or sometimes partial it gets very complicated. So it would be, you know, for example, if you have if you're using your FY, you're using up your FY or in FY twenty. So yeah, you could. You, I'm, I'm wrong, actually. I just want to need um, somebody here. It's actually the year of funding year. I'm, I'm wrong about that. Sorry. It's funding year. Sorry. Sorry, Melinda. Funding year. And, you know, I did this myself, so I should probably know better than that. Does that answer any questions? <laughs> okay. So you may have, in cases, in some cases, complexities in terms of writing some of the stuff like multiple sub awards across different years. And I know some people do very complicated braiding funding with different awards. So, but in terms of the VOC awards, yeah, it's by funding year. So, all right, uh, next, next slide. This is just to show you the updated instructions. Um, common questions that we get. What, why doesn't OVC eliminate the match waiver spreadsheet reporting requirement? Well, we've talked about this. I probably get this question more than any other question I've ever gotten before in my life. Um, and we would like to get rid of it, um, but we can't because that provision is still in there that requires you to report to the director. So until some of that changes, um, this is how we've done it. You know, if for those who've been around for a while, you had to use to submit whenever you did match waivers, you have to each, each subrecipient's letter. And so over the course of the years, we've tried to make this as easy as possible, changing policies, making it basically turning over most of the responsibility over to us, the SAAs. So um, this is about as low as we've, we've got in terms of requirements, but this is how the mechanism we're using the reporting until that changes or, or something is different, um, we, we need to report and this is our mechanism. Our state has authorized a blanket match waiver policy for some or all our subrecipients. Do we need to still complete the spreadsheet? Yes. <laughs> the reason I brought this up is that over the course of the, the requirement, um, people use the word blanket. Now, it's in actually the policy. I actually didn't like that term. I'll try to get Kate not to write it in there, but blanket, basically, you can wave match for all 100% of your subrecipients. So that would be a term of the blanket. But some states were confusing the term, I have, I have a blanket waiver, so I don't have to fill these out. We, we just waived everything. So there's no requirements to do anything. That's not really what the word blanket meant. It just meant that you can waive match for everybody, but you still have reporting requirements. In fact, I just ran into this like last year with somebody, I was like, you haven't filled this out. And they're like, well, we did a blanket, we're good. We don't have to do it. And it's like, no, that's not what the blanket means. It's just a term of knowledge meaning that during this pandemic period and potentially this period, you are providing 100% match to all your subrecipients. That's what it means. So I just want to make sure people aren't confused what the word blanket means. 
All right, next slide. How do I report my grant year? See tabs at the bottom of the spreadsheet. See, I even wrote it in my own thing. Sorry, I've been a little off today. So, um, when is this due? By 120 days after the end of the fiscal year. Um, if you can turn it in by December, that's great, but you have that 120 days. Um, it's no it's no big thing. Just make sure you submit it through via GAM and it will be good. What if I round up our match numbers? As I said before, just simply round the numbers prior to inserting them in. And that seems to be a question we get a lot. But I know a lot, we don't get that as much as we used to. Um, it seems to people have kind of figured that out in terms of what's best for their states in terms of entering that information. Uh, next slide. Information about OVC. Well, OVC always has a wonderful page. A lot of people don't know. For, uh, so this is for new administrators. If you go to OVC's website, um, website, you will see an OVC administrator's web page. I kind of um, took a screenshot, so it's down there. This is where we will keep those policies. People ask, like, where can we find the spreadsheet when it's posted? It'll be posted on that page. And so you can find the match waiver policy. There's tons of links in this in slideshow, but the the, the policy um, going back to 2021 is still there, and you can click on that link and Take a look at it, and and one of the things I always like to point out as a you know plus, you see the Vocapedia um, link there. A lot of people ask us allowability questions or things that we've addressed over the years many times. So that's a great resource for you new administrators to see if maybe you know, go through that Voca allowability page, Vocapedia page, and see if we've already addressed them. All right, next slide. All right, in summary, the COVID-19 emergency came to end on May 11th, 2023, and initiated for one year after that. New VOCA subawards, renewals, or continuations made after May 11th, 2024 will no longer qualify for mandatory match waiver. New waiver spreadsheet is, as it says, now available, but is not available just yet. Probably will be another week or two before we can put it online, um, but we will, and we'll send out an email to all of you to let you know that it's, it's currently active. If, and one question I, I, I should have put on there, they'll be like, well, we've already started our work using the previous um, match waiver spreadsheet. That's also acceptable. That's fine. So if you already filled it out and you want to wait until the next fiscal year, you are allowed to turn submit your work using the previous um, spreadsheet. You don't have to transfer everything because I know some states literally kind of plug it in as they go along because they have so many subrecipients so that they kind of plug in as they're moving along. So you don't necessarily have to convert everything to the new spreadsheet. Um, but if you're starting from scratch and you're and you're, you're doing a new you know sub awards, use it. Please use the new spreadsheet. Um, SAs are required to submit revised policies via Just Grants and notify the OVC grant manager for email. So let them know that you submitted that in there and just grant so that they can, we try to keep a box. So we keep track of all those different policies so we can quickly pull them up instead of digging into each grant. Um, SAs are required to annually upload to just grants through a grant award modification, match waiver spreadsheet list and all several match waivers approved in the F federal fiscal year for each relevant federal award. All right, next slide. Just Grants training resources. So many of you may be new to Just Grants. Uh, there's wonderful sources that you can go through here. If you click on those, I think if these links and the thing would be able to click on, take those trainings. It doesn't necessarily tell you anything about match waiver spreadsheets, but it does show you in terms of how to upload those spreadsheets into the system in terms of using your GAM. So a lot of people ask like, what's a GAM? How do I find that out? I can't necessarily look, if you look at the entity administration, I'm not sure what to do. Um, so work with your grant manager and also look at some of these great resources that Just Grants provides. Next slide. As always, the VOCA Center is here to support as well. So they are working hard to keep you um, informed, to keep you trained, to work with us as our partners in training and technical assistance and many different things, wonderful things. So make sure we need assistance. Of course, you can ask your grant manager about all these different things related to the spreadsheet. But if you are needing a much larger, expansive um, kind of mentoring program or something that you may need, the VOCA Center is always there to help as well. Next slide. 
go social. Um, we always put the social media things that you can keep in terms of the Facebook, Twitter, and or X, excuse me, and YouTube. We have some wonderful slides and pictures of our National Crime Victims' Rights Weeks from last week. So um, if you're not part of our socials, please sign up for them. We greatly appreciate it. And then the next slide. I think that's the question. So I'm going to go through here. I, I Sorry. Can't always see that. Let me pull them off here to the side. Please don't be giving me hard ones. All right. Joel, I had one question that was sent to me. I can give to you. Um, it was All right. is there a reason why these are being uploaded using the GAM process instead of being attached to the annual report. Yes. So the annual report. No, it, one of the reasons is the um, policy may not come in at the same time. And uh, and two, the annual report is due December 30th. So if you did it that way, then you would lose some time. So some people may not be ready. So it, this way, it's just easier for it to go through. But you're right, doing the annual report, it gets in the system either way. Um, and I guess if you did it that way, we wouldn't necessarily ding you. But in the best case scenario, um, people who are submitting, you have updated the policies may do it on an April. And so they're not going to wait until the next whole year because we only do the annual report every year. So that is one process we tried. We actually looked at different things using entity management in terms of um, putting as deliverable. Um, there was a lot of issues that were kind of complicated um, related to that because we felt that the GAM was kind of an approval process on the policies when, in fact, it's not. And we'll put language in there saying, you know, when you do a GAM, we're not approving your GAM. We're just acknowledging the acceptance of it and putting it into our system. So just wanted to say that. So we looked at a different things. In fact, it's what took this website so long just trying to figure out so we kind of end up going back to the same process so after reviewing many different options at least four different options kind of went back to the cam is probably the best and easiest and clearest way for SAAs to upload their information and so let's see it's Anna um, would we submit a GAM for each federal award and just grants for which we are waiving match? So, yes. So, depending. So, pay attention to this. That's a good question. Sometimes states may confuse them. Let's say, for example, you are just waiving match on FY20 still. You haven't spent all your funds down for FY20. In that case, you would just upload that match waiver GAM into your FY20 award. You would do that that thing. Um, it'd be pretty easy and not all just just had somebody recently do this last year. Um, they put it for all their open awards. No, it's just FY20. However, if you're going to wage ma if you are one of those, one of those states literally like always have their, their sub recipient, their sub awarding to all their, all awards at once. So some wait and they'll do one at a time and they'll slowly spend down. Some will take bits and pieces out of all four. They may have four active awards and they're going to wave match on all four of those vocal awards. Then, yeah, you would need to use the spreadsheet. Now, that's why you can fill it out for the different years. Just complete one spreadsheet and put it in all those four years. So it really depends. Some are just going to do one. Maybe they have two open awards. Maybe they have all four open awards. So if in your spreadsheet, there's a fiscal year that you're using. Um, yeah, you would, you know, the award year, not for the award year down at the bottom. Yeah, you would upload it to that. Does that make sense? Let's see. Um, my state makes our match waiver policy public by including. I think, um, Nikki, I think that's fine. Um, if any OVC people disagree with me, let put that down on answer Nikki's question. But I think, as I said, many different ways is, is possible because you are submitting that publicly to the subrecipient. So I don't have a problem. I uh, see. Yeah. I just got another question. In the federal funding year for a sub award changes mid year, thus changing the amount of the wave match for a federal. Should resubmit a revised spreadsheet. You know, that I have one grantee that does that too. Um, with that one, I'm going to say ask your grant your uh, grant manager because it really depends. There's a few variables there I don't want to get into. Um, but you would not necessarily need to do that to submit a spreadsheet, but there, 
it was one occasion where we might have had to. So the answer is ask your grant manager because like. I need to see that if I'm, th if this, you know, you're Virginia technically, but this was another state it was very complicated. So, um, ask your grant manager and we'll work with you. I have a feeling you don't need to submit it, but changing, but I'm, I'm not sure. I need to visually see that. All right. Let's see. So there okay. were some, a uh, couple of older questions before that. I don't know if you saw Megan's question I might, about I might our not have. Okay, do you want me to read it quick? Sure, go ahead. Okay, so Megan asked, our state typically awards a VOCA grant in two separate state fiscal years, meaning that match waivers will adjust each year. Should we be completing a GAM, sorry, it just scrolled, and updating the spreadsheet each year? Yes. I, I believe so, if I can visually think about it, yeah. Many states, you know, a lot of states will have multiple funding years, like the, they'll have an RFP process one year and they'll go out three, but then they do have like an individual yearly sub-award. Um, I think only one state I can think of has like a two-year award, performance award period. So, yeah, but in technically you would have to do it every year, yeah. And we will always we will always advocate uh, to eliminate these as well, so it's less for us. Um, Amanda, am I missing any other ones? Because that's kind of kind of I see a lot of chat. I know Malgrishada answered like one some question to Lindsay. Yes. So Nikki I had a question about: Do all SAAs need to revise their match policies due to the end of the national pandemic period, or only if our policies changed? significantly or change in the future significantly? Well, it would depend. Um, that's a good question. Um, if you never updated your policy prior to the pandemic period, then yes, you would need to update the policies. Um, and, and if you don't have some of the key things we talked about in terms of future pandemics or the end of the pandemic period, then you may need to do that. Because um, I would consider um, that pandemic period information to be substantial. So, Nikki, did you ever submit one prior to us before? When when you did, Nikki, I'm asking a question. Did you? Mm -hmm. um, we submitted a revised match policy all right. result of the fix, the clock national period and it is 10 to 5 now that the pandemic is ending. But sort of revise it at clock if that's a requirement. It's still really yeah, fun, I couldn't really hear it, man. Period. I think the audio is not coming through very well, Nikki. So anyway, Nikki, we'll we'll take a look. You can ask uh, our grant manager, um, particularly that person um, knows was the one who helped me with the match waiver spreadsheet. So I have a feeling you probably do, just to make sure you include some of the, the language. But um, maybe maybe it's not a substantial change. Uh, when in doubt, send us a match waiver policy. Um, I, we're trying to reach out to make sure that if you hadn't done it correctly before that you do it now. But if there's no substantial change and you already had the substantial, what you've turned into us before has substantially changed. You already had the pandemic period in there. Um, as I said, we've gotten some over the past whole year. So we've already gotten some. If they haven't changed, then you don't need to change it necessarily. I'm just not sure when you might have submitted your original, um, any changes, um, things of that nature. Because I know some states are going back to what they did prior to the pandemic. Um, and so I always say, well, make sure you have some policies related to um, some things that we talked about in this web webinar, most importantly talking about future pandemics and public, make sure it's public and how they can request these things and things of that nature. I believe there was just one question so far that hasn't been addressed um, from Chris, when should we submit our SAA revised match waiver policy in just grants? Whenever you can. 
um, if it's not done yet, then not yet. So whenever it's ready, please submit it. There's no time frame on that. So submit it when it's ready. Any other questions? Joel, can you remind me if we answered this question? Anya had one about if the funding year changes or the sub award, the funding for the sub award changes mid year and thus changing the amount of match waived for the federal award. Should we resubmit a revised spreadsheet? Did you answer that? I, that one? I did answer that one. I can't remember nondescript answers to ask your grant manager because it could be different factors in there. So um, probably, probably not the answer is no, but I, as I said, I could, another state situation that was so complicated that I might need to look at it. So Margaret Otis is a braided and funding person, so she's asking the questions related to that as, as best as we can. So thank you, Margaret Zada. Well, if, um, so thank you. Anyway, take a look at those, um, that one question related to Margaret Zada and um, the braided funding, because that's a question we get a lot in terms of, that's why I talk individually talk to your grant manager, take a look at the instructions. We tried to lay that in there, um, but that is always something that we are providing training on. And I just got back from a state which had some of the most braided funding I've ever seen, California. So that is something we always trying to work on the states in terms of um, how to make sure we capture that information correctly and that's reported correctly and different things of that nature. If there are no other questions, um, I want to thank everybody and specifically the VOCA Center and um, Janelle and her team for helping me have this webinar. We are here to ask questions. We may even have this match waiver presentation again um, if we need to. Um, I plan to upload um, the um, match waiver spreadsheet up to the website within a week or two. I have a place to be, to Salt Lake City, next week, so I'm going to try to get that uploaded. Um, make sure I touch base with the team. There's no more revisions, and then we will send an email out to you all. And as I said, you still have six months or more to really fill this out. So if you're using your previous spreadsheet and you don't want to change, you don't need to. But if you haven't filled it out yet, then you can use our new spreadsheet and has less boxes, and hopefully it'll reduce the time it takes and the administrative burden that we're putting on you with this. All right, that's it. Thank you so much.